Yesterday we had completed uh, chapter 2. So the last verse was 72 in that. Sri Krishna is explaining to Uddhava, uh, to Arjuna. He says that just like the river which flows inside the ocean. So many rivers are flowing inside the ocean. And after that also the sea is calm. It is not getting upset. Likewise, this sage has to be exactly like that. The main gist of all the teachings still today was to have a tranquil mind, to overcome the problems associated with the mind and to make it placid. There should be no disturbance of any kind. And when there is no disturbances, there are no desires as such. I don't want anything is what the answer is. Then there are no attachments of any kind. There is no egotism. There is no thirst for enjoyments. So basically what we learned yesterday was, what we learned yesterday was, when a person has placidity of the mind, this person can achieve the highest. Enlightenment can come to the person. This enlightenment where the dis, you know, complete dissipation of the mind happens, there are no desires happening in this person's life, then he has t reached the state of enlightenment which is also called as yoga. Yoga means union with God. This is what we had learned yesterday. So today we are going to start chapter 3. So we are doing Bhagavad Gita chapter 3 verse 1. Arjuna said, Krishna, if you consider knowledge as superior to action, why then do you urge me to this dreadful action? Keshava. So, <laughs> Sri Krishna has given him a clear understanding about three different stages. That is, the first one is called the knowledge path. The second one is called the karma yoga, which is the path of action. And the third one was a path of devotion. And naturally, when a person is given this kind of an understanding, the understanding never seeps inside. It doesn't go inside that person immediately. Why is this? The reason is because the mind is not able to do multitasking. Alright? The mind doesn't have the capability to accept such a huge amount of knowledge at one time. This knowledge by itself is humongous. Though it is a very simple line which says there are three paths of knowledge. One is called the knowledge path, uh, three paths of uh, reaching the divine. One is called the knowledge path. Second one is called the path of work or job or action. And the third one is called the path of devotion. It's so simple. But yet when you try to teach people, it doesn't seep inside. Now, I will give you an understanding of how people make judgments. Now you have been, many of you have been sitting for satsang for last so many months, you know, days. And those who have listened to my satsang earlier. If I ask you a simple question, I will get at least multiple answers from even an individual. So the question is, should a person get married? So whosoever has been listening to my satsang will say, Guruji, from your satsang we have heard that, you know, nobody should get married. You should not get into a relationship. You should not become a grahastha. And grahastha means you all get into desires. All this thing is going to come out. 
Now, where have I said that you are not supposed to get married? Nowhere. I never said that you should not get married. Marriage is written in the stars, okay? <laughs> it is called destiny. If it has to happen, it is anyway going to happen. Nobody can stop it. But if it is not written, it is not going to happen. Secondly, if children are written in that person's destiny, they are anyway going to happen. Desires are going to come. All these things are going to happen. Where is the question of saying that Guruji, you have said not to get married, not to get into desires, not to go for this, not to go for that. I haven't said any of those things. What was mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita is what I have just told you. It is called exposition. We are talking about how to get to enlightenment. Did you understand? We are not talking about in the material world you have to become like that. It is just about reaching the state of enlightenment. Period. That's it. There is a path. So when you joined a college, how many branches of engineering are there? Many. Electrical, mechanical, computers, instruments. I don't know how many are there. There are tons of it. Can you do all of that just because it is called engineering? No. You have to zero on to one. And when you zero on to that one aspect of it, then you have to catch hold of it as if it's the life and death situation and you have to progress in that direction. If it is mechanical engineering, you have to only go towards mechanical. You are not supposed to be looking towards other different different things that are there. Right? Exactly like that. If you are interested in becoming enlightened, then there is a path which you need to follow and that path is very specific. It talks about giving up things. It talks about reaching a state of enlightenment only by giving up your mind. <coughs> Sorry. Apologies. So there is a way. And that is the path which was discussed. And even when you ask me a question related to any aspect there is no limitation to what a person can do, what a mind can do. The mind is uncontrollable. Desires are uncontrollable. Everything is uncontrollable in this world. You see, please understand, thoughts. Can you control the thoughts? No way. So Sri Krishna, when he gave the teachings to Arjuna, he has given a generalized picture that there are three methodologies which I have said. One is the path of knowledge, one is the path of uh, action and the third one is the path of devotion. That's it. At the end of the day, how do you go towards that path? This is the methodology. Take it if you want. But Arjuna says, you know, when you told me all these things, I am getting more confused. I don't know what you are talking about. So, if you consider knowledge is superior to action, then why do you urge me to this dreadful action, Keshava? <laughs> so it is, Sri Krishna, why are you telling me to first follow the path of knowledge and then you are telling me you are supposed to do action? You tell me one thing only, no? Why are you telling me hundred different things? It is logical. So we move to the next verse. So we are doing Bhagavad Gita chapter 3 verse 2. You are, as it were, puzzling my mind by these seemingly conflicting expressions. Therefore, tell me the one definite discipline by which I may obtain the highest good. Isn't that how your mind also works? When you are giving different, different methodologies, how are you going to achieve this? So if I have to tell you, that tomorrow we are going to make something. Alright? 
from the dough that we have. So it is an idli dough to make idlis. So I tell you that tomorrow we are going to make dosa. Dosa is flat pancake. And day after tomorrow we are going to make kuli panyaram. Those are the idlis which are put inside, you know, they are fried literally, kind of stuff. And if you don't know any of these terminologies, you are going to look at me and say, what are you talking about? Where is the scope for making all these things? You focus on to one thing, you see. If we are making idli, we are making idli. Don't keep on telling me we are going to make dosa. Don't keep on telling me we are going to make kuli paniyaram and all this kind of thing. It doesn't work for, for me. <laughs> exactly what <laughs> Sri Krishna has said. And Arjuna is getting more confused because too many things, too many things. He can't grasp even one. So he says, see, you are explaining the path of knowledge and then you are telling me about action and then you are talking about devotion. He says, too many things are cluttering my mind. Oh my goodness, I can't manage this. <laughs> so he says, as it were, you are puzzled my mind by these seemingly conflicting expressions. They are all conflicting. In the path of knowledge, you are supposed to sit in one place and not do anything, only study. <laughs> in the path of action, you are supposed to do action. And in the path of devotion, you are not even supposed to bother about knowledge, you are not even supposed to bother about action, you are only supposed to be in love with God. I mean, don't you see that all three are different paths? So therefore tell me the one definite discipline by which I may obtain the highest good. So tell me only one. See, I am not such an uh, intelligent person in this world, okay? You are talking to a, a person who has deficit of knowledge and in intelligence. Okay, I have just a few, you know, so many grams of brain only. So you telling me so many different things, my brain can't grasp it. So please, can you just tell me one? So, we will proceed to the next verse. So we are doing Bhagavad Gita chapter 3, verse 3. Sri Bhagwan said, Arjuna, in this world, two courses of sadhana, that is spiritual discipline, have been communicated, enunciated by me in the past. In the case of Sankhya Yoga, the sadhana proceeds along the path of knowledge, whereas in case of Karma Yoga, it proceeds along the path of action. So naturally, Sri Krishna has to start from the beginning once again. How many times have you attended my satsangs and I had to start right from ABCD? Why? Because things don't percolate. It's not easy to remember everything. Spirituality is a very deep subject. So, Sri Krishna has to explain right from the beginning. He says, okay, in chapter 2 I explained all these things in general. Now I have to explain to you step by step. So now we are going to tackle only one. Hopefully we should be tackling only one subject. So he says there are two paths. The third path he is not discussing because it doesn't involve action, it doesn't involve learning. Do you get the point? Devotion path doesn't even require action to be done nor even requires learning to be done. So devotional path is all about falling in love with a person. That's it. Person is the God himself. Okay. So we are not going in that direction. So he said there are two definitive paths. One is called the Sankhya Yoga, which is called the knowledge path. Where you are supposed to gather knowledge. Where you learn about different, different subjects. The subjects are all kinds, which means... You just have to do the Vedas, the Upanishads, all this kind of different different scriptures that are there. You follow the books, you follow the teachings of the masters and you follow the path laid out by them, which is the path of knowledge. So this path is the, in case of the Sankhya Yoga, the sadhana proceeds along the path of knowledge. And 
the second path which is called the path of action in the second path you have to do action there are no other criterias for doing this knowledge path sankhya yoga is all about going and studying stuff and applying it in your life it is following the path and application of the path so you will find that most of the people in the world they follow the path of sankhya yoga those who become sadhus the sadhu is supposed to become a sankhya yogi but most of the sadhus they have left their houses not because they want to become a sankhya yogi they have left because they have got fed up with the world maybe they are fed up with their family maybe they are fed up with money maybe they don't have a house to stay people give up stuff and they want to become a yogi so there could be any reasons you need intellect to become a sankhya yogi please understand the criteria is very clear do you have that 1 dollar brain or do you have some 5 cents 10 cents of it you cannot operate on the path of sankhya yoga with little brain power you got to have a fantastic grasp of the subject which means you should know the subjects so let us say there is a person who is joined the college okay and wants to become an in a, is joined an engineering college but his efficiency is in biology and other subjects he wants to become a doctor all right he is interested in medicine but because of circumstances his parents may be or the the examination where he wrote he is forced to join medical instead of medical college he is forced to join an engineering college isn't it a mismatch over there absolutely the mismatch is you have leaning towards one subject but you are going in another direction the second part is there are people who are getting 50% and 60% marks and just because of the category that they are in the government says that you can you are free to join but who is the competition of theirs the top 100 students who have scored above 95 marks and this fellow has got 50 and 60% marks so how does this person who has got 90% marks and above compare with a 50% mark person the knowledge of this person is very less but just because of reservation you know reservation policy is there even in us and other countries the reservation policy says that even if they have a less percentage if they are qualifying for it they should get that particular and uh, you know whatever course that they do well you are going to get a mediocre person when the person has very little brains actually and you are trying to put him in a course where you require a fantastic operational strength in that in knowledge base intellect and a person doesn't have it reminds me of all the jerry lewis movies who is minding the store <laughs> and those type this person has no qualification and he goes and he is trying to mind the store how is that going to happen is going to be a complete mayhem no knowledge you got the point some of the comedy movies from the past you know if you see them you will understand what i'm talking about all right 
So you will find that uh, Red Skelton, Laurel and Hardy. These are very beautiful movies where you see they are little less in their head, you know, no intellect. <laughs> but <laughs> so it becomes a comic situation. It is a it's a type of a thing that happens in our world. What can you do? So the mismatch is there. So that is why Krishna is saying there is one path, then there is another path. A path of intelligence, which is the intellectual path, is called the path of knowledge. You need to have a little brains in that. And then there is a path of action. You can't have a lazy person doing action. Isn't it? So that is also <laughs> understood. So he says, then there is, these are the two paths which I had enunciated. So now let us move to the next verse. We are doing chapter 3 Bhagavad Gita, verse 4. Man does not attain freedom from action, that is culmination of the discipline of action, without entering upon action. Nor does he reach perfection, that is culmination of the discipline of knowledge, merely by ceasing to act. This is a very, very dangerous verse. You see, the reason why it is dangerous is, is because it is giving us a clear indication of what is action and what is knowledge. You see, in today's day and age, action is performed by pushing a button. Alright? Action is performed by pushing a button. Action is performed by artificial intelligence, chat GPT. The automated factories are running. The huge automated factories are running. There is somebody there to push a button. To put the system on. That's it. That is not called action. Action means you have to actually do the action. This is a yuga of tamas. In the yuga of tamas, you see, we Indians love to have quite a lot of stuff which we eat, you know, like idli dosas and all. I am just giving examples of idli dosa because many people have heard about this. I am not talking about parathas and all those things. Okay, let me... Even I can talk about paratha. Or any other stuff. Well, earlier there was a time you had to soak you know, rice and other things. And then you had a grind. There was a hand grinder. So you take that big grinder, put that thing inside and then you grind it with your hands. Now what has happened, the next step that happened was they got mechanical grinders, that is the electric grinders. Now the stage has come where you get the dough already made. You go out in the marketplace and get the dough from there. You don't have to make the dough at home. That means no soaking. Today's day and age, you just take a little, you know, dry dough and you put water in it and maybe you don't even have to do that. Earlier the coffee used to be done in a different way. The tea was done in a different way. Now the tea is dip dip bags. You see, you dip a bag and you make tea for yourself. It's the most tasteless stuff on earth. So, this is the yuga where people don't actually work. But they tell you, they have worked so much. You ask anybody, I work from day and night, you know, I am really tired. Tired pushing buttons? The computer is buttons only. Alright? Everything is done by chat GPT, Grammarly and every other stuff. Okay? 
today the companies are trying to remove people because the latest AI can also write the programs. The programs for which you require an engineering degree and all those kind of stuff. The reason why they are removing these people is because the programs can be written in all these AI language. Whatever the artificial intelligence does, it can be done. So here Sri Krishna is very clearly telling. The path of action means you have to do the action. This action is very important. I love to talk about films. Okay. So, in one of the films, there is this young boy and there is this dragon. And he is supposed to go on that dragon and fight the enemy. You see, he got to have a sword. And he designs the sword. So it is right from getting the metal to designing it is his job. Because he is used to work with uh, a blacksmith before. So this is a story. So in Japan today, you can still find people who use the ancient techniques of brewing also, of making metal objects and various other things. They start from the base and they really work very hard to achieve that objective. In the path of action, a person has to do action. So Sri Krishna is saying man does not attain freedom from action without entering unto action. That means if you don't do action, you cannot enter the path of karma yoga. You cannot push buttons and say I have done action. Pushing a button and doing nonsensical work which you don't even, when you are not even needed over there is not called action. And people really think that they are doing working, you know they are working. That's not action. In the future, we are going to become more lazier. Hmm? There are going to be autonomous vehicles. You don't need somebody to drive you. You tell that autonomous vehicle where you want to go. It is going to take you, drop you over there. And that's it. It's automation. So you can't say, I've driven through heavy traffic. This happened, that happened. Come on. You never did any of the sort. Physical action is a necessity. You have to lift your sword. You have to fight the battles. Sri Krishna is telling Arjuna this. You know the reason why he is telling him that? Is because Arjuna got the swords and other weapons from Shivji. He has really worked very hard for getting them. So, it is like that. It's not ready-made stuff. You have to really work hard towards getting it and using it physically. Then only the path of action opens up. And then he says, the path of knowledge doesn't mean you are supposed to sit in one place lazily. You got what I am saying? You are not supposed to just say, Oh, I am going to just sit over here and, you know, there was a movie in India, it was called Robo, R-O-B-O-T, okay. In that, the person is a robo. So what he does, he takes a lot, big fat, fat books and does like that, you know, all the pages keep on moving and he is reading them. So in a minute he has finished reading a huge book. It is, there is no shortcut in knowledge. Knowledge means you have to actually work for the knowledge, which means study, 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 study. And you cannot say, I will just do cut, copy, paste. 
No cut, copy, paste over here. Do you have the knowledge? No. People have very little knowledge. And they do this. Knowledge path is cut, copy, paste. Oh, don't worry. I'll just Google the information. Do I really need to know it? No, no, there is no need. Any which way, wherever they are asking for information, they themselves don't know about it. <laughs> which is a fact of life. <laughs> the interviewers also don't have much knowledge. So what about the interviewee? The interviewee has mugged up certain lines and he just spews them over there with very little knowledge and understanding. You got to study the subject and you cannot be sitting and saying, Oh, I have done it. So here Sri Krishna is saying, The path of action is only performed when you perform the actual action. Full action. The path of knowledge is when you study the subject intelligently. And not just sit in one place like a, you know, like a couch potato and think that, oh, I'm just going to watch TV. You know, when people say, I watch this video, I watch that video. And they say, I have knowledge. No, that is not called knowledge. Many a times people have asked me some questions. And I have refused answers. One person asked me, he said that, you told me that there are these gateways. They are called star gates. Star gates is a multi-dimensional gateway. I am just giving an example. Don't ask me this question again. Okay? Otherwise you think that Guruji is going to answer you. No. Star gate is a place from where you can enter another dimension. So they are asking me, Guruji, please tell us about it, no? I want to know more about it. No. You are not ready for that knowledge. Why do you think I will tell you? Same thing in another book which is called Tripura Rahasyam. The disciple, okay, his father is sitting outside in yogic posture for 10,000 years. His son is his disciple and the disciple, when he sees this king, he takes the king inside the mountain. How do you enter a, a block of stone? You cannot. So he just drags him by his hand and makes him enter. Is there a technique for that? Of course there is. You think you are ready for it? You don't even want to know how things are done. So how can you be taught something which is esoteric arts? You have to start at the base. Magic is not going to be done for anybody who is not ready to even learn the basics A, B, C, D. And doership is important. You cannot be getting everything on a platter. So this is the verse which tells a person that if you really want to understand knowledge, you have to. You cannot be sitting in one place and not doing anything. Like those yogis and babajis who are sitting in one place and thinking that they can crack the codes. No. No. And a person who doesn't do anything and says that, you know, I want to, I am a yogi. Who, who is a karma yogi? No, sorry boss. It doesn't work like that. So Sri Krishna is first putting all these things into the picture so that you cannot just ask for things and not do anything about it. So we will stop over here at verse 4.